Hey, welcome back to Super Romp on Natural, the series where I recap and review every single episode of Supernatural until I drive myself to insanity. This is a good one, another Urban Legends episode. But before I get into that, if you could do me a favor, I have a survey linked down below in the comments. It's for this game show thing I'm working on, and if you could fill it out, that'd be super helpful. Amazing. It's just like a bunch of fun, random questions. It's, it's not like hard or anything. It'll take you five minutes. No pressure, but it would help me out a lot. That's enough of that. Let's hop into Season 1, Episode 7, Hookman. All right, we got some hot sorority girls in a bedroom. Oh, hey, is this the first black person with a speaking part? Crazy. Although, it's not that crazy. History lesson. As I've said before, the show is filmed in Vancouver, which is in British Columbia, which is in Canada, which is where I live. And something that a lot of people don't realize is that there are way fewer black people in Canada versus the US. Largely because there was way less slavery in Canada than the US. Like, we're talking about 4,200 Canadian slaves total versus... 4 million slaves in the U.S. just at the time of the Civil War. And even then, most of our slaves were indigenous. Well, that's all right then. According to the 2011 census of Vancouver, black people made up only 1% of the population, compared to 46.2% European and 27.7% Chinese. Yeah, there are a lot of Chinese people on the West Coast. All that's to say that it's not surprising that a show filmed there would have fewer black people than you would expect, even though it's supposed to actually take place in the US. This is the longest, earliest tangent I've ever taken, but I think it's interesting. Anyway, back to the cute co -its. The modest one seems to be going on a date, but her friend, who seems to be coded as the slutty one, suggests a more revealing outfit, and pressures her to wear it. This opening is basically an after-school special, with a very violent ending. Spoilers! Damn, that's a short skirt. Hey, you know how I'm super into low-rise jeans because they were a big thing when I was going through puberty? Yeah, even more true of denim skirts. And she is rocking it. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. There's nothing you wouldn't do. It's true. I think I'm in love. Bro, you're taking my job. Sorry, this has been a particularly lecherous opening. Ooh, big man with the fancy words. Lecherous isn't a fancy... Anyway, modest girl Lori is in the car with her date, Rich, who takes her to an abandoned spot. Ah, those were the days. Lori declines a call from her dad. They get smoochin', but he tries to steal a base, but she says no, and he takes it surprisingly well. Oops, he's trying again. Scratch that last bit. No means no, buddy. Not cool. Hookman isn't pleased either, but he goes out to see what the scratching sound is, but suddenly the car is scratched by an unseen force. The tire blows. Lori is scared. There's a tense pause. Where's Rich? Then... <laughs> something scratching on the roof. Then silence again. She opens the door and starts running away, which is crazy. That seems way too soon to start running away. There's a crazy guy right outside. God, I love denim skirts. She turns and sees Rich suspended above the car, all messed up, and she screams because of course she does. To the boys. Dean belittles Sam for ordering a girly coffee. <laughs> Toxic masculinity, am I right? Uh, yeah, that's actually true. What, just because I'm horny I can't be woke? You know, assuming makes an ass out of you. <sighs> Sorry, it's Started thinking about asses. What was I saying? Yeah, that's about right. Anyway, they read of a mutilated body allegedly killed by an invisible attacker. Sam's not convinced because they always have to disagree at first, but they go to check it out anyway. They pull up to Dead Rich's frat house. Damn, that's a sexy car. They talk to a guy painting himself up for the big game, Murph. They ask him about the guy who got killed. Murph says the people say that it was a psycho with a knife. Says he was with a super hot freshman who's a reverend's daughter, which I guess he finds extra hot. Personally, I don't really get that. Cut to the church. Oh snap, it's Bulldog Briscoe from Frasier! This is Bob Bulldog Briscoe, you're in the doghouse! <laughs> He's talking about Rich, who he believes died trying to protect his daughter. Sam and Dean walk in, making a ruckus. Lori stares at Sam for a weirdly long time. My true love tries to convince Lori to go do tequila shots with her and the girls, but she has dinner with her dad. Says she'll try. The boys introduce themselves. Seriously, Lori is hungry for Sam. Girl, your date just got murdered. Control yourself. They try to comfort her. She introduces her dad, who is basically the complete opposite of Bulldog. It's weird. Dean distracts dad so Sam can talk to Lori. She says the police don't believe her when she says there was some invisible killer. And I get it. Sam tells Dean she heard scratching on the roof and found the bloody body suspended upside down over the car, which sounds exactly like the Hookman legend. Sam thinks the Hookman may be no man at all, but rather some kind of spirit. They get arrest records dating back to 1851. And they have a bunch of reading to do, which is right up Sam's alley as an aspiring law student. So much reading in law school, it really sucks. Don't do it. Sam finds that in 1862, a preacher was arrested for murder. He was pissed about the red light district and killed 13 prostitutes. Some of his victims were suspended upside down from trees as a warning against sins of the flesh. 
What's more, the preacher had lost his hand and had it replaced with a hook, which is, fittingly, what he used to kill them hookers. The cherry on top? This happened on Nine Mile Road, which is where Rich was killed. Back to Lori and Bulldog. He's dropping her off at the sorority house. He doesn't like the influence her roommate has on her. Lori walks in. There's a scratch mark on the wall. She sees her roomie asleep in bed and goes into the bathroom. And back to the boys who are at the scene of the murder. They bust out the rock salt shotguns, which will help if it's a spirit. There's a rustling in the trees. Sam points the gun and it's a cop. Whoops, yeah, that would look suspicious. Back to Lori, who was Astrid in the Snowpiercer show, by the way, if you're wondering where you know her from. She goes to sleep. Unfortunately, she doesn't see the freaky hook man hiding behind the door. She wakes up the next morning, sees a puddle of blood, and sees that her roommate has been sliced up. Then she sees a creepy note written in blood, Aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? Which just seems unnecessary. Back to the boys. Dean talked the cops down to a fine by claiming Sam was a pledge being hazed. He actually told the truth, that the gun was filled with rock salt to hunt ghosts, which of course sounds ridiculous to people who don't know they're on Supernatural. As they leave, the cops rush out and they follow them. There's a classic sitting in the back of the ambulance with a blanket over your shoulder shot. Why is there always a blanket? Daddy Bulldog wants to take her home, but she's connected to two murders, so she's kind of a suspect. But the Reverend manages to talk the officer into letting her go as long as she's available for questioning. The cops in this town are really easy to talk out of stuff. The boys sneak up to the sorority house. They're looking good. Daytime lighting really does not well. Think we'll see a naked pillow fight? If only, Dean. This ain't HBO. Dude, stop taking my lines! Well, you said the toxic masculinity thing! They climb up to a window and climb in. They check out the room. They see the message. Turns out the message is straight out of the legend, so I guess it wasn't so unnecessary after all. Fair enough. Also, they smell ozone really strongly, which confirms to them that it's a spirit. Sam notices that the symbol on the wall matches the one of Jacob Carnes, the hookman, who was unfortunately buried in an unmarked grave, which makes it hard to locate and burn his remains. However, it's safe to say it's related to Lori, so they go to a party to find her. Sam has a hypothesis. There's a pattern. Clergymen who fight against immorality keep getting accused of killings that they claim were due to some invisible force with a sharp instrument. This one is pretty damn obvious that it's Reverend Bulldog who has a spirit killing people trying to corrupt his daughter. Although it's not clear if he's doing it on purpose or accidentally because the spirit is just latched onto him. So Sam will keep an eye on Lori and Dean will, much to his chagrin, leave the coeds and go try to find the unmarked grave. To the cemetery! Dean's a bit nervous, which is fair, because he's in a cemetery and he actually knows for a fact that ghosts exist. He finds a grave with the guy's symbol on it, which isn't really an unmarked grave so much as a very specifically marked grave, but whatever. Sam sees Daddy Bulldog arguing with Lori through the window. Dean finds the preacher's body. Lori goes outside and finds Sam waiting outside. Again, folks, don't try this at home unless you look like Sam, because you're going to get the cops called on you. Lori says Sam should run away from her because people around her keep dying. And honestly, she's doing surprisingly well considering all the grisly murders she's witnessed of late. But I guess the show would be kind of annoying if everyone was realistically traumatized. Dean salts the bones, then pees on them? Just getting his lighter fluid. Then he sets the bones on fire. Problem solved, right? Wrong, we're only 25 minutes in. Lori is complaining about her dad. Apparently she learned that her dad, the super moral dude, is seeing a married woman who goes to their church. Okay, maybe he's not totally unlike Bulldog. They're out of control. They are completely ruled by their hormones. <laughs> Lori is understandably pissed because, damn, that's some hypocritical stuff. She was raised to believe that if you do something wrong, you get punished. Then they start macking, but Sam stops her. Because of Jess. And also because her dad seems to be controlling a murderous hookman. Okay, maybe not, because said hookman hooks the Rev and drags him inside. Sam grabs a salt gun, rushes upstairs, kicks in the door, and shoots the ghost right before it kills the Rev. I'm not sure why I dragged him upstairs instead of just killing him in the doorway, but I guess he wanted to hang him up somewhere? I don't know. Anyway, it's pretty safe to say the Reverend isn't controlling the thing. They're at the hospital. Sam's telling the cop about the hookman. Then Dean shows up. Sam thinks the hookman is latched onto Lori unknowingly, and it attacked her dad because she was upset that he was having the affair, and she thought he had to be punished. But it's weird, because Dean burned the bones and buried them in salt, so the ghost should be gone. However, Sam thinks that maybe the hook is the source of its power. Research time! Turns out that after the hookman's execution, the hook was returned to the church, which would explain why the hookman kept framing reverends over the years. So they check church records and learn that the hook was melted down and turned into something else. So they head to the church because they need to melt down anything they find made of silver, since that's what the hook was made of. Dean searches the church, Sam searches the house. Then they do the melty melty. Uh oh, someone's upstairs. Phew, it's just Lori praying. Finally, she's starting to show the slightest bit of perturbation at the horrors of her life. 
Although it's kind of funny that she only gets upset when she realizes it actually affects her personally. She says she's to blame that there's an avenging angel doing the punishments. My date and my best friend got brutally murdered? Eh, sucks to be them, let's go mack it with this cute guy. Wait, I'm involved? That's crushing! Unfortunately, this realization that it's her who deserves to be punished calls the Hookman, and the candles blow out. Sam tries to get her out, but Hooky McGee is outside the door. They keep running, and he smashes another door. Sam gets hooked. Hooky drags Lori. He smacks Sam again. He's closing in on Lori. Dean rushes in and shoots the ghost. They're confused why it's still here. But then Sam notices Lori's chain, which turns out to be a church heirloom. And it's silver! A hook scratches the wall. Sam shoots in the direction of the scratch. Dean throws a necklace in the fire. Hooky attacks. But then the necklace melts, the hook melts, and Hookman burns up. And the poor actor never even gets to show his face. I actually went to look up who played the Hookman so we could get his due, but it's really confusing. The wiki page shows this guy who does seem to match the glimpses we get in the show, but every reference, including IMDb, says it's Sean Millington who looks absolutely nothing like him. Is this guy also named Sean Millington? Was there an IMDb mistake? Was he recast? I'm confused. If anyone knows what's up, please let me know in the comments and I'll show it in the next video. Anyway, it's the next day and we get the classic morning after with the cops scene, which has happened pretty much every episode now. Dean and his pretty eyes explain that they saw the hook man, but he ran away. The cop starts to tell them to leave town, but Dean's way ahead of him. Sam gets a moment with Lori, who's back to her remarkably unperturbed self. She thanks him as Dean watches like a creep. Dean half-heartedly offers to stay, but Sam shakes his head and they leave. Off to find more monsters! And ideally their dad. And that's the episode. Another urban legend one, and a great one at that. The Hookman was really creepy, and the twist that it was actually attached to the daughter and not the father actually surprised me the first time I watched it. Of course, this is my 10th viewing, so it didn't really surprise me this time around, but it was still a really great misdirect. Plus, all the jeans skirts didn't hurt. Well, no, they did not. Anyway, for all the above, I'll give this one 8.5 out of 10. That's two in a row. This show's on a roll. But hey, let me know what you think in the comments. Or just say hi. And please do fill out that survey, which is, again, linked in the comments. If it's still there, then I'm still looking for answers. I really want to get this game show thing going. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay smiling.